So before we dive into interacting with MongoDB on our computer, I want to just quickly talk a little bit more about how data is structured in MongoDB, because understanding this means you'll more easily know how to interact with the database to get what you need done. So MongoDB stores data inside collections, and a database can have as many collections as you like for different types of data. For example, a database could have three collections, a user's collection, a blog posts collection, and a comments collection. Now the user collection would store user data or user documents, the blog post collection would store blog posts, and they would be documents, and the comments collection would store comment documents. So. Our different types of data or documents are stored together in their own groups, their own collections. And this way it would be easy to fetch all of the documents from a single collection. For example, I might want to fetch a list of all of the blog post documents so I can output the title of each one in the browser on my website. So I would just tell MongoDB to send me all the documents inside the blog posts collection. Now, documents themselves represent the individual records in a specific collection. For example, inside the blog posts collection, we'd store a load of blog post documents, and each one represents a single blog post. Now, the way that data is structured inside a document looks very much like a JSON object with key value pairs, but actually it's been stored as something called BSON, which is just binary JSON. But for all intents and purposes, a document looks very much like a JSON object, and when we fetch documents from a collection, JSON objects are ultimately what we get back. So a blog post document might look something like this object with a title property, which could be a string value, an author property, which could also have a string value, a tags property, which could be an array of strings, an upvotes property, which could be an integer, and a body property, which would also be a string. Now, as well as these custom properties that we might give to blog post objects, every document would also have a unique ID property to identify them. This property would be a special object ID type in MongoDB, and it's assigned to the document by MongoDB itself when we create a document, so that every document can be identified by this unique ID value. And then if you wanted to, you could query MongoDB to fetch a document with that specific ID. So you can see how these documents look very much like JSON objects, and that makes the data really easy to work with. Now, just one final thing before we move on. Documents can have properties whose values themselves can also be documents or arrays of documents. In this case, we'd call those documents nested documents. For example, the auth property could actually be a nested document, which has a first name property, an email property, and a role property or something. And this would be an alternative approach to referencing an author document in another collection. So we'll learn more about nested documents and nested arrays of documents later in the course. I just wanted you to know at this stage that nesting documents is a possibility when you're working with MongoDB. But anyway, now you hopefully have this kind of bird's eye view of how data is structured in collections and documents in MongoDB. So let's move on and explore MongoDB Compass in the next lesson.